It's over for Trump. I know that's bad news to start at election day, but I don't want to sugarcoat it. We have been consulting the experts here at the Daily Wire. We have been talking to all the great prognosticators and there's just no way that Trump can win because Mercury is in retrograde or something like that. I still stand by thinking that Joe Biden will win, but that there will also be an unprecedented change to the nature of rulership in our presidency. Let me explain. Biden is having eclipses in his first house, seventh house axis. This has happened to every presidential winner going as far back as I've researched. Literally like Trump in 2016, uh, Clinton Carter, like it goes back. His eclipses are supercharged indicators. First house of self, it's supercharging identity forward. And this is happening to Senator Harris too. There are other things that affirm this, but this is a big indicator. Along with Senator Harris entering the literal biggest peak period of her entire life, which is not only a peak, but like a very, very impressive one for any human being. Alongside that, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction is happening on December 21st into 2020. They meet every 20 years, and now it's a 200 year cycle in air signs. Historically coincides with transitions of power in a very dramatic way. Think Caliphate, the Kyoto period, etc. But it's close to revolutionary Pluto. It looks like a literal new reality for the US. A literal new reality for the U.S. So obviously we can't keep our old president in the new reality. That is what all social scientists sound like to me. And I'm just following the science. I'm just following the data. So we had a good run, good four years. It's been a good run since 1776. But now I guess we're just in a new reality. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. Welcome back. And happy election day. I hope, I hope that that witch is wrong. I, I, she is a witch, right? She's consulting astrology. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know the technical term. I don't know the scientific jargon. My favorite comment from yesterday from Chosen Bard. By the left's logic, would waving a gay pride flag on a gay pride parade also be like ISIS? This is a great question. I wondered it because yesterday they said that, that anyone waving a flag, you know, so Trump supporters waving the American flag, it's just like ISIS waving the ISIS flag. So is it true of any flag? But I think the difference might be the trucks. You know, ISIS had kind of a little bit older, not so nice, but they were still trucks. And then the Trump supporters obviously have these giant trucks, you know, huge raptors and things like that. The gay pride flag though, usually is being waved in like really nice, like Tesla's or so. so I'm not, I don't know, maybe that would change it, but probably, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure the left would call gay pride flags, ISIS flags, if they were being waved by Trump supporters, which they often are. It's a very complicated issue and tensions are going to be running high all day. Probably we're going to need to chill it back. Tune it back a little bit. Try to relax. Great way to do that, by the way, is with a glass of wine. You know how much I love First Leaf. It is a wine club that sends personalized selections of wine from top vineyards around the world directly to you. The only thing better than one fantastic bottle of wine, what is it? It's a case of award-winning wine that shows up at your doorstep. I was super skeptical of these guys when they came on the show because a lot of wine clubs just aren't that good. And then I tried it. I ordered. I got my little a sampler package. And I try the wine and I say, wow, this is actually a very good wine. And I really like this. And I really like this. And I really like this, but I don't really like this. So I go on and I rate them on the website. And then the more you rate them, the, the better that First Leaf understands your palate. So they start sending you even more tailored uh, shipments. This stuff is fabulous. It is incredibly good wine. The price is extraordinarily low. You're not going to beat it anywhere. And the best thing is their experts are the ones pairing it to your taste. Subscriptions are flexible. They arrive on your schedule with practically zero effort. What are you waiting for? Get that Friday feeling like I do any day with First Leaf. Join today. You will get six bottles of wine for $29.95. That is outrageous and free shipping. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash Knowles. That is six bottles of wine for $29.95. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash Knowles. So everyone's making fun of this woman on the internet for talking about how Mercury in retrograde and the eclipse and that, and that's why Trump is going to lose. There is nothing more frivolous about that than there is about social science generally and all the pollsters and everyone talking, <laughs> you know, we, we're all trying to pretend that the people who predict the future using, I don't know, charts or something are somehow uh, less silly than the people who try to predict the future looking at the stars. Okay. Social science is unfalsifiable, right? 
So you always would hear this. The polls were right in 2016. The polls were right in 2016 because the polls are always right. The polls are always right. If the polls are wrong, like for instance, the polls say Trump is going to lose in 2016 and then he wins. They say, well, no, the polls were really right because it was kind of close here and it was kind of close here. And look, if, if the polls just say that, he, let's say he's got a 90% chance of losing, well, then if he wins, then the 10% was right. So see, we're right. Science, hashtag science, hashtag data. The, this social scientific world, polling and everything attached to it, is part of the same progressive apparatus as the mainstream media, as the modern university, as big technology, as all of these things. And we know that the mainstream media are fake news. We know that the universities teach fake education. We know that or fake scholarship. We know that big technology suppresses certain stories that they don't like, like the Hunter Biden story from the New York Post. We know all of this, and yet for some reason we still believe the social scientists, because they have science in their name. And even conservatives are conditioned to love the word science and to follow science and to pretend that there are no biases here. The models are only as good as the data that go into them. This is the one thing Dr. Fauci got right about the entire coronavirus fiasco, which is that the models take whatever you put in and then churn out results. But you got to, you have to have correct information going into the models. Do we have correct information going into the models? I don't know. We've been told that the polls are oversampling Democrats. The polls did get many things wrong in 2016. So I don't know. You're not allowed to, that's the one thing you're not allowed to say in modernity. I don't know. But that's what we have to acknowledge when we look at social science. It is the most sound, science sounding thing. So people believe it's objective. Do you know, do you know which poll of presidential candidates has a better record than even Nate Silver, 538, certainly than New York Times or, or Washington Post or CNN or any of these top outlets with the best pollsters. Do you know what has a better record than all of them combined? Cookies. A bakery in Pennsylvania that sells cookies with each candidate's name and then they decide based on which candidate's cookie sells the best, who's going to win the election. The cookie poll is more accurate than Nate Silver. And yet for some reason, we all listen to Nate Silver, a Pennsylvania bakery. This uh, bakery is owned by, or the, the bakery rather is called Lochel Bakery owned by Kathleen Lochel has been, has predicted the last three presidential elections correctly. This year, the Trump cookies are outselling the Biden cookies six to one. This is good news. I know you've all been listening to CNN polls and Nate Silver poll, so you're a little bit down right now. But I've got the cookie poll for you, and the cookie poll says Trump is going to win. I, look, I don't, I, I do care what happens in tonight's presidential election, but that is actually not the point I'm making. The point I'm making, what I would like to convey to you, is that you should put much, much less uh, effort and time into reading all of those polls that everyone's trying to get you to read. The cookies are legitimately a better predictor than the world's most famous statistician. I, I got, I got in trouble on this show uh, maybe a month or two ago because I said that statistics are a liberal psyop. <laughs> and I, I don't know, maybe it's because I use that kind of lurid language. People got upset about it. Statistics, relatively new uh, category of scholarship. Uh, it developed with the modern progressive state. It comes from the German word statistic and the Italian word statista, and it means literally relating to the state. So as the modern progressive administrative state develops, you get statistics, which are the data that feed into that state. That's how the universities play such an important role in the shaping of our modern progressive state is because they feed the statistics that the experts who are the bureaucrats and the administrators of the state can then use to warp public policy all without any kind of democratic input whatsoever, all without any of the kind of traditional politics where we persuade our fellow citizens. The difference between social science and reading tea leaves is one of perspective. Social science assumes a material world reading tea leaves and horoscopes and crystal balls and whatever else you want to look at assumes a spiritual world. Neither of those things will actually give you the power to predict the future. Certainly not over the long run. And the world is obviously spiritual. So this is my other, beyond the cookie poll, this is my other favorite piece of social science that, that uh, because of the spiritual humor of the world tells us something. Karen's support Biden, Dick's support Trump. 
I'm not using any slurs. I'm not using any kind of foul language. That is a scientific fact. Karens, women named Karen, tend to support Joe Biden. And men named Richard tend to support Donald Trump. The New York Times has been conducting polls with Siena College for two months now to look at how people with certain names vote. So if you, if you look here, you've got the, the most common name, the most likely popular name to support Biden. All the way down there is Karen. Michael is up, up toward the Trump line of things. Michaels tend to support Trump. And then Richard, Dick, most likely popular name to support Donald Trump. Now, you can look a little more closely at this and find out that there are a few women who are more likely to support Trump than Biden. Linda, Jennifer, Nancy. Those are women who will, are more likely to vote for Trump. There is one man who's 50-50. That's Joseph. And then all, and Christopher too, also 50-50. And then all the rest of the pro-Biden people. So, so every single pro-Biden name is a woman, which I guess should make sense. Tends to be the, and, and some women then vote for Trump because married women tend to vote Republican and single women tend to vote Democrat. So we need, we need more Nancy's in the world. We need more Jennifer's. We need more Linda's. Is that going to make the prediction for you? Is that going to convince you that Trump is going to win? Well, there is an, there is an actual expert and I don't mean an expert who wears a lab coat and he's a social scientist and he's, he pours over spreadsheets all day. I mean, an actual expert with actual experience in politics. One of the best political analysts in the country, he is predicting a Trump win, which would probably make us all feel safer. You know what else makes us feel safer? Ring. Ring home security. There's a thousand reasons why protecting your home matters to you. You want to know who dropped off that package. You want to know if your mother-in-law is going to come visit. You want to know if roving marauders are going to be torching your neighborhood and you can see who they are on the camera. Either way, whatever it is, whether you're in your home, whether you're at the office, whether you're at that bike by the pool, maybe you're on vacation, you can check in on your home from anywhere with one simple app. With Ring, you can keep an eye on your home no matter where you are, right from your phone. If anybody comes by, you will have that peace of mind anytime knowing that your home is protected. I am going to be getting the heck out of Dodge after this election and I'm going to be moving to Tennessee and I'm going to have a nice house because you can't, it's hard to get nice houses in LA, but you can in Tennessee. And I am so excited to install that ring right on there so that I can tell when the marauders and the in-laws are coming into town. Get a special offer on the ring welcome kit at ring.com slash Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S. Comes with rings, video doorbell three and chime pro, the perfect way to start your ring experience. Plus, free two-day shipping. Go to ring.com slash Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S. That is ring.com slash Knowles. Beyond the cookies, beyond the horoscopes, beyond the Karens, there is a guy with experience who is going out on a limb. Most politicians prefer to stay vague about everything, so they're always right. This guy always just runs headfirst into the burning building. Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House, former presidential candidate, all around great political analyst. He is coming out and predicting that Trump is going to win and he's going to tell you exactly where and how he's going to win. I think uh, Trump wins with 324 electoral votes. I think that uh, the um, left is, will be in total shock by the end of the evening. Trump will get a <laughs> much larger share of the black vote than any Republican since 1960. Uh, he will do surprisingly well with Latinos. Uh, he will have an enormous almost unimaginable turnout in rural and small town America. Um, I was just being told a while ago about a Trump rally in Arizona that had 96 miles of cars mm -hmm. with Trump flags, 96 miles. Uh, yeah. That's a level of enthusiasm. You watch two or three uh, Biden events and then you watch two or three Trump events, you can't have any doubt about where the weight of enthusiasm is. And obviously none of us would have that doubt either. I mentioned, I think yesterday on the show, I went to vote in Los Angeles and I had a MAGA hat on and I was a little nervous, you know, because we could be 
shot, you know, we were in a very liberal precinct and someone did yell at me and he yelled at me to tell me how excited he was for Trump to win. And he liked the daily wire and he was, he was obviously a conservative guy. Another guy next to him yells at me and he was yelling at me to not put my ballot in the place where the liberals were going to steal him, but to put it in the safer place. He was obviously a conservative too. Plus me, plus my wife. So you got four conservative people all happened to be in line at the same time at a very, very liberal precinct in LA. That's strange. Doesn't mean I'm predicting LA is going to go for Trump. Doesn't mean I'm predicting Greenland would go for Trump, even though that would be the most absolutely delicious thing that could happen in political reality, you know, on earth right now. That would be just so great. Heads would explode if, if California went conservative. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I am saying there is a big, big enthusiasm gap. Now it may well be the case that sure, nobody likes Joe Biden, but there, there just are enough Democrats and the Democrats are motivated enough to vote, even though they don't like the guy, even though Kamala Harris is also awful, that they're, they're just in the numbers, they've got it. That's, that's what some of the polls are reflecting. But Gingrich has experience and experience is a kind of expertise that is, I think, much better than some guy who studied statistics or something for too long. Now, I love listening to predictions from people with that kind of experience. I hate listening to predictions from people who are actually involved in counting the votes because this election very likely could come down to Pennsylvania. It could come down to one state, Pennsylvania. And the attorney general in Pennsylvania, a guy named Josh Shapiro, is already calling the election for Joe Biden. I don't know if Ben is related to Josh. They do share a last name. If he is, I would urge Ben to call cousin Josh and say, Josh, stop being such a jerk. Because Josh Shapiro, who is, he's not a campaign operative there. He is the attorney general of the state. He says, quote, if all the votes are added up in PA, Trump is going to lose. That's why he's working overtime to subtract as many votes as possible from this process. For the record, he's 0-6 against us in court. We've protected voting rights. Now ignore the noise, vote. Highly inappropriate stuff. Highly inappropriate for someone who's the attorney general. This is supposed to be a fairly by the books, judicious uh, position to be so nakedly partisan and to, to say that they're going to keep counting these votes until they get the answer that they want, which is what he's saying, isn't he? Part of these court fights that, that have been going on in Pennsylvania regards when to, when to stop counting votes because we, ha we now have universal unsolicited mail-in ballots. We've never had that sort of thing before in the history of the United States. There, are election there was an election day for a reason, then we made it an election week and then an elect election month. But now even ballots that are, are mailed after, after the due date are going to be counted in the election. How does that work? You can, wait, are you going to keep mailing ballots until the end of November? Are you going to keep mailing them in December? How about next March? If you don't like something Trump did, can you mail in some ballots then? No, we have deadlines for a reason. And if you don't get your ballot in by the deadline, just like if you didn't show up on election day, that's it. Sorry, Buster, your vote doesn't count. Except, unfortunately, the courts have sided with the liberals here because of people like John Roberts, that turncoat chief justice of the Supreme Court, who was nominated by a Republican. Now he's a liberal, which is why it's important to have actual strong conservative presidents who have chutzpah to nominate actual strong conservative judges, unlike weaker Republican presidents in the past. Now, the one thing I do love about this tweet from Josh Shapiro is this is going to be great grounds to challenge whatever corruption, crooked practices they have while they dig up a bunch of fraudulent votes in Pennsylvania if, if the Democrats try to steal the election. This is going to come in real handy because it's basically the attorney general of Pennsylvania saying, hey, I'm committing election fraud. Don't forget to vote. <laughs> okay. Can't wait to bring that one to court. That is lawlessness. How does the left justify this stuff? The left justifies this by saying that President Trump is as bad as Hitler. And actually, there's one prominent leftist who just said that President Trump is worse than Hitler. That is the kind of person, this is an expert. This, this person is an expert who said this, a doctor, a medical doctor, and she could say something so stupid. And me, I'm not an expert. I don't even know how to fix a car. And I would never say something so stupid. 
But you know, when I am trying to fix a car, rockauto.com comes in very handy. Rockauto.com is so much easier than walking into a store and someone demanding quick answers to things like, is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? I don't know what letter comes before the X, just give me the part. But they never have the part anyway. So what they do is they go into the back, then they go online, they probably go to rockauto.com, they order the part, and then they charge you twice as much. Don't do that. Skip the line. Skip the hassle. You can go to rockauto.com. They've always got this great catalog to see all the parts available for your car or truck. The catalog is so easy to navigate that even I can do it. And the prices on rockauto.com are always reliably low. They are the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. And then whatever I am. I don't know. I'm neither a professional nor a do-it-yourselfer. I'm like some third lesser category of guys who have cars. The rockauto.com catalog is unique. It's super easy. You can, you can check it out at a glance. Great selection, reliably low prices. Head on over there right now, rockauto.com, and then write Knowles in their How Did You Hear About Us box so that they know that we sent you. That is rockauto.com. Check out all the parts available for your car or truck, and then write Knowles in the How Did You Hear About Us box. This woman, Dr. Bandy X. Lee, is the president of the World Mental Health Coalition. How ironic and a frequent guest on CNN and MSNBC, much less ironic. And she is saying not only is Donald Trump similar to Hitler, he's actually worse. Donald Trump is not an Adolf Hitler. At least Hitler improved the daily life of his followers, had discipline, and required more of himself to gain the respect of his followers. Even with the same pathology, there are varying degrees of competence. So I, I guess I see the joke that she's trying to make. First of all, just as a general rule, it's probably not good in mainstream public life to make jokes about Hitler for millions and millions of people. If you're a, if you're a public health expert, if you're sort of a, a mainstream analyst, it's, not, it's just not a good idea. But I get the joke she's trying to make. She's saying, oh gosh, you think Hitler's bad and you're comparing Trump. To, Trump's even worse than Hitler because at least Hitler was disciplined or something like that. But then she goes on, she's so effusive in her praise of Hitler that you start to think, hold on, wait, does this lady have a, <laughs> this is going beyond the joke now, you're kind of talking, and yeah, and at least Hitler had those beautiful, wonderful blue eyes that you would just get lost in all that, you say, hold on, wait, calm down, Bandy, calm, that's, you've taken this way, way too far. Also, she's wrong about Hitler, is the other thing, because people don't know anything about history. Hitler, uh, let me check, check through the list, did not improve the daily life of his followers, he did not have much discipline, right? Wasn't he a drug addict? Wasn't he a kind of, he'd lose his temper all the time and he's a, he, he committed suicide, not very disciplined. Uh, he required more of himself to gain the respect of his followers. I don't, I don't know that that's, I don't even know what that means, but if it means anything, I don't think it's true. So no, I don't think Trump is Hitler. I don't think Trump is worse than Hitler. I think Trump is a much better fella than Hitler. But they, they believe this stuff. I mean, this is not just a joke that she's trying to make. She is expressing a view that many people think. I mean, I have, I have friends and family who are liberals who tell me that, that Trump is a Nazi, you know, and I guess the implication is the Trump supporters are Nazis, which is more than a little bit offensive. They blame him for everything. The Atlantic writer, Anne Applebaum, just, just tweeted out some, some truly varsity level gaslighting. If you're in a major metropolitan area right now, you might notice that buildings are boarded up. If you go, if I go to Beverly Hills right now, Rodeo Drive, most famous road in, in Beverly Hills, one of the most famous roads in the world is boarded up. Stores have taken their merchandise, put it into warehouses because they're afraid of riots and looting, the kind of riots and looting that we've seen for the past seven or eight months. Do you know who Ann Applebaum at the Atlantic blames? She blames Trump. When conservatives celebrated Trump's election four years ago, did they know that in 2020 we would board up shops, prepare for riots and the arrival of militias, game out ways he might steal the election, protest aggressive voter suppression? This is what he's done to America. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Does anybody really believe that the riots and looting that people are preparing for tonight would come from conservatives? No, not even Ann Applebaum believes that. Nobody believes that wild gangs of, of Trump supporters are going to go steal Gucci handbags on Rodeo Drive. Nobody believes that. It's going to be leftists. It's going to be Biden supporters. It's going to be the same Biden supporters that have been looting and rioting and burning down the country for the past seven months. Not one of them, not one of the people who stole a Gucci handbag is supporting Donald Trump. 
all of them, if they have the, a preference at all among candidates, are supporting Joe Biden. So how's that Trump's fault? Well, because he might steal the election. He might steal the election. Hillary Clinton said that Joe Biden shouldn't concede under any circumstances. Democrats are openly, aggressively trying to steal the election. The attorney general in Pennsylvania is calling the state for Joe Biden before the votes have been cast, before election day. They're, they're, Trump is going to steal the election. The Democrats refuse to concede the 2016 election up to today, up to today. On election night 2016, Hillary Clinton would not come out and concede. She sent John Podesta out there to very limply say, thanks for showing up. Hillary's always been here for you, except now when she's supposed to be here the most. So we're not going to concede. And then later she had to sort of concede, but she hasn't really. She said it was an illegitimate election that was stolen from her. And then the bureaucracy in collusion with the Democratic National Committee and the Hillary Clinton campaign, tried to overturn the Trump election for three and a half years. Republicans are trying to steal the election. And voter suppression, what voter suppression? How? Sh show me how Donald Trump is trying to perpetrate voter suppression. Well, he, he, he only wants citizens to vote. Yeah, right. That's called following the law. Well, he thinks that you shouldn't be able to vote, you know, after election day. Right. Yeah, you shouldn't. That's called following the law. Can I vote? Look, listen, I, maybe I didn't, I don't like how the 2008 election turned out. Can I vote now? Am I allowed to vote? Maybe, maybe I didn't cast my ballot in 2008. Maybe I want to vote now because I, I and, and I want my vote to be heard. Can I vote? Can I undo the Obama presidency? Why not? Why can't I? Deadlines don't matter. Election day doesn't matter. Why are Democrats trying to suppress the vote? Everything this woman said is just not true. They are the ones burning down the country. And this, to me, is the choice on election day. Trump supporters wave the American flag. Biden supporters burn the American flag. That's the choice. That's the choice. Michael, not all Biden supporters are burning the American flag. Right. I'm not saying all Biden supporters burn the American flag, but all the people burning the American flag are Biden supporters. Well, maybe some Trump supporter. No, no Trump supporter has ever burned the American flag. Not once, not one time. In fact, Trump supporters treat the American flag with great respect. I remember, I forget if it was Hillary or, or Obama during one of their campaigns, some stupid staffer took a photo at an election setup. And the photo was of an, a flag. It was black and white. And it was a flag kind of on the ground and they were getting ready to hang it up. And this caused a, a, an unexpected controversy. The, the Democrats didn't understand why it was controversial because the Democrats don't realize that you're not supposed to let the flag touch the ground. Patriots, people who respect our country and respect the symbols of our country know that. We, we were raised to know that. Whenever, if I was at a 4th of July parade or something and the flag touched the ground, my mother would say, Michael, you can't, the flag can never touch the ground. Never. Many people in this country don't know that anymore. And when you have no respect for the symbol, you have no respect for the symbolized. That is what symbols do, right? Symbols represent things. And if you disrespect what is being, if you disrespect what is representing the thing, you are disrespecting the thing itself. And now more, I mean, I think we know this intuitively. Why else would people burn the flag? It's just a piece of cloth, right? No, it's a symbol of the country. Why else protest the flag? Like at NFL games or, or at democratic caucus meetings. Why protest the flag? Because it's a piece of cloth. No, it's because it's a symbol of the thing itself. And the left doesn't like this country. And they've been engaged in a more than century long campaign to undermine this country because they believe it's rotten from the beginning. They believe the founding was not in 1776 or 1620 when the Mayflower arrived. They think it was 1619 when the sla slaves got here that this country is defined by every rotten thing it's ever done and none of the good things. And that all of our country's enemies are defined by only the good things they've ever done and none of the rotten things. And if they can't find enough rotten things to accuse America of committing, they'll make them up. That's what they're doing. Oh, the past was bad. Now we got to move into the future and the future is going to be so much better. We're, we're the ones we've been waiting for. Thank goodness we're here to liberate us from that awful oppressive past of America that gave us our lives. Those awful forefathers who gave us everything we have in this country, every political institution, those awful rotten people. That's the election. Do you like the country? Do you not like the country? If you like the country, vote for Trump. If you don't like the country, vote for Biden and be on the side of the people burning, burning it down, which makes sense, I guess, and lighting the flag on fire and destroying stores and assaulting people in the street.
Those are the choices. But Michael, Trump's a, or Biden rather, is a sort of moderate guy. He's, he's, he's not a radical. I don't know. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. I don't think he believes anything at all. I think he's a complete empty suit and I think he's got an empty head. But what I do know is he has sided with the people who are attacking this country and who are lighting the flags on fire. And so I'm not on his side. I'm on Trump's side. It's amazing the, the degree to which anti-Americanism has, has affected our country. So much so that full professional sports teams are now pretending that this isn't even the American country at all, which we will get to in one second. But you understand how important this election is. So tune in tonight to our live stream at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific. It's not even tonight. That's in the middle of the day. Featuring special guests, live interviews, and more. We will be covering the results with you in real time. Even better, join Daily Wire now and get 25% off with code election so you can watch all of our election coverage live on our Apple TV or Roku app. Watch the election with us at dailywire.com. Get 25% off your Daily Wire membership with code election when you sign up today. We will be right back with a lot more. Many people don't believe that this even is our country. And this is not just some radical left idea that you learn in some critical studies class in college. This is being pushed by major sports teams. So the Chicago Blackhawks, now before any of their matches, I don't even know what are they, games, matches, I don't know. They read this statement. This is a statement that they will now read before every single one of these games. The Chicago Blackhawks acknowledge that the team its foundation, and the spaces we maintain, work and compete within, stand upon the traditional homelands of the Miami, Sauk, Fox, Ho-Chunk, Menominee, and the Council of the Three Fires, the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations. We understand that this land holds immense significance for its original stewards, the native nations, and the peoples of this region. We would also like to recognize that our team's namesake, Sauk War Leader Blackhawk, serves as a continuous reminder of our responsibility to the Native American communities we live amongst and draw inspiration from. What? What? The, first of all, the original inhabitants of this land. What is, it, what is an original inhabitant of this land? Is it, is it the tribe? Is it the sub-tribes, the tribes within the tribes? Is it the tribes that conquered the other tribes? If I go down to the Southwest United States, and I, which is the United States now, by the way, it's not Apache land. It's not, it's not Comanche land. It's not whatever land. It's the United States. It's American land. And I go down there and all of a sudden I get some pang of American guilt. I don't know why I would, but let's say I, I think I'm immune to that, but let's say I did. Would I then read a statement and say, I acknowledge that I am standing on Comanche land. I guess I could, because we did take it from the Comanche, but the Comanche took it from the Apache. So should I who should I acknowledge in my statement of guilt? The Comanche or the Apache? Probably none of them. Who are we? Which, which tribe are we? I guess they, they're going to acknowledge all of the tribes because every tribe and every other people and every other place and every other country on the face of the earth from the beginning of civilization to the present has been so much better than us. We've committed all these crimes. I don't think so. The, the crime that they're accusing the United States of committing is the, the crime of conquest, which in some instances is true, in some instances isn't true. In some instances we had treaties that we upheld, in some instances we had treaties we didn't uphold, in some places we just won territory through outright war. But you know what I do know about the war, the, the law of conquest? Every other people throughout all of human history has exercised it as well. Why uniquely is the United States to feel sorry for this, to apologize, to rend our garments and gnash our teeth? The reason is because we're the most advanced country in the history of the world. Advanced in many ways too. I'm not saying we're this absolutely perfect virtuous country. We kill a million babies a year. We're advanced in, in barbarism as well, but we are advanced. We are much more advanced and sophisticated in, in a, any broad sense of that term country than, than anyone else. And we feel bad about that. So we have to pretend that we're not, and we have to pretend it was all Ill, ill-gotten gains, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Part of the reason why our civilization has been able to advance so much 
and to, by the way, to be really nice to everyone else in the world and let people come in, by, in, in at a higher rate than anyone else ever on earth. The largest mass migration of human beings has occurred over the past 60 years ever in recorded history. And it's occurred into the United States because of how generous we are in immigration. So the United States has been able to, to achieve that, that degree of prominence because of a specific culture and a specific civilization, specific ideas and specific people that now the flag burners want to tear down. They want to overturn them. And that will not make the world better off for everybody else. That will plunge us all ev into even greater barbarism. So what map are we looking at tonight? Who's going to win? Trump or the flag burners? Who's going to win? My map, and you know me, I don't, I don't consult the horoscope. I don't uh, have a cookie shop. I, but I did make my prediction. So my map is uh, all, it's going to be all red uh, and plus Greenland. So Greenland also red. So a lot of people talking about 538, 538 electoral votes. That's how many. I'm going to say 623 because I'm going to give Greenland 85 electoral votes. Why? I don't know. Why not? It's a big, big land mass. I don't know how many people are there, but that's fine. It seems big. That's what I want. And I'm, I'm only half joking. I'm only, I, I don't, I don't think the whole entire uh, country is going to vote for Trump, <laughs> but I, I don't know what's going to happen. If, if I wake up tomorrow, well, I guess I'll still be on set tonight. If I find out tonight that Joe Biden won narrowly, wouldn't be surprised. If I find Trump, Trump won narrowly, wouldn't be surprised. If I find out that Biden won in a big way, you know, he got a huge number of electoral votes. I guess I wouldn't be that surprised. It would, that would surprise me a little bit more. And if I found out Trump won 40 states or some, some crazy, you know, some insane number like that, I also wouldn't be that surprised. I don't know. The, the models are only as good as the data you put in. And we're in such a bizarre year with the unprecedented, widespread, unsolicited mail-in ballots with the coronavirus lockdowns. I guess coronavirus is not unprecedented. We've had epidemics like this and actually much worse than this before. But the lockdowns, the politicization of the coronavirus by the left mostly is unprecedented. The degree of fraud that you've seen. And I'm not talking about fraud even at the polling places, although Attorney General Shapiro should make us a little worried about that in Pennsylvania. But I'm talking about the fraud in the bureaucracy itself. This is the first coup d'etat in my lifetime. What happened in 2016 to the present is the first attempted coup in my lifetime. There have been others in the United States, but first one since I've been alive. So I don't know how to factor that into my calculations. There is a strange phenomenon going on, which is these organic Trump parades. You know, because there haven't been quite as many rallies, I think Trump's done something like 12 rallies in the last few days. I mean, he's, he is just absolutely killing it in the last few days on the campaign trail. But because there haven't been as many rallies and formal events as there have been in years past, people are just creating their own Trump parades. I've seen them in California. I've seen them all over the place. People get in their cars or their trucks and they have an American flag and they have a Trump flag and they, what, maybe a Gadsden flag, something like that. And they go down and they go on for miles and miles and miles. You, you don't see that. You haven't seen that, but you don't see any Biden parades. There are no Biden. Not one time has there been a Biden parade. That, is, that shows you that something is going on in the country. I suspect that enthusiasm difference is going to factor into the election results. Even if it doesn't, low. And let's say that there isn't fraud for a second. It, that still tells you something about our politics because you've got a country that is so starkly divided and not just about this issue or that issue, not just about taxes, not just about certain rates of immigration, not, not even about really serious issues like abortion, but about the country itself. Some people like the country, want more of it, have loyalty to their country, love it, and, and other people don't love it. They hate it. They hate it. They want to fundamentally transform it. I'm, I'm not saying this even as like a cheap political shot. I'm saying, if you ask them, they'd say, yeah, I hate this country. I love what this country, what, what they would usually say is this. No, I love our country. I hate what we were, but I love what we could be. I hate what we are now, but I love what we could be if we only live up to the ideals that I, I invented five seconds ago. Not that George Washington or Thomas Jefferson invented, but that I invented. Sure. If you, if you hate what a country is now and you hate what a country was in the past, and you enjoy what you think the country could be in the future because you've got a crystal ball, that means you hate your country. You like your daydreams and you hate your country. 
And that is a, that's a fundamental distinction. Chesterton famously said that there's a thought that stops thought, and that's the only thought that ought to be stopped. That there are, there are principles that we have to take on faith. There are axioms that we need to begin with in this country, in any country. And one of them is you have to love your country. You have to have patriotism. You have to support it. You have to not try to destroy it. You don't have to not, try not to subvert it. And, and we're having a disagreement over that question right now. So even, let's say Biden wins fair and square. Hope doesn't happen, but let's say it does. That puts us in a very, very bad position. You've seen the riots. You've seen the mayhem from the, from the military wing of the Democratic Party, known as Antifa or BLM. Just, just the other day, they were, the cops were getting ready for the, for the election unrest. Listen to the sort of things that these leftist activists scream at cops. That's, that's who we're dealing with, folks. No, that's just the extreme. That's just one person. It's not just one person. It's not just one person. And it's not just going on in New York. They've torched New York. They've torched DC. They've torched Chicago. They've torched LA. They've torched all over this country. Atlanta. They've all, all over. I, I, Kenosha. I, I don't know. I can name however many more towns. This is a national problem and an ideological problem and a political party problem because all of these people are aligning with the Democratic Party and not one of them is aligning with the Republican Party. And, and the way that we deal with these cultural problems is not to throw our hands up in the air and say, well, okay, I guess we've got to just do better at persuading our citizens. No, the time to persuade is now. And the way that we do that is in politics. The way that we deal with these political questions is in politics. All too often, conservatives have tried to make this neat distinction between culture and politics. And there's something to be said for that because the movies, I guess, are different than how we vote. The mainstream media is kind of in the middle there, right? But there's no neat distinction here. Politics is not just some tiny little thing that we should, we should surrender power on. Politics is how we live together as people and how we persuade one another and how we can govern ourselves. It comes from the, the Greek polis, the city-states, how citizens come together. Politics is a much broader realm than I think many con- conservatives have been willing to admit. And today is the day that we express our views on that. Stakes could not be higher. And that is why the great Taylor Swift, our hero, is coming out to sing our country back into a Democrat malaise. Why are so many powerful people trying to make it so difficult for us to vote? It keeps me awake, the look on your face, the moment you heard the news. You're screaming inside and frozen in time, you did all that you could do. And the big bad man and his big bad clan, their hands are stained with red. Oh, how quickly they forget. Obviously, none of that is true. She opens up with the Kamala Harris clip. Why are so many people trying to make it so hard to vote? It has never been easier to vote. You don't need an ID. You probably don't need to be an American citizen. You don't need to request an absentee ballot. You don't need to show up on election day. You can vote basically whenever, apparently after the election, perhaps, (laughs) or at least after the deadline to send in your mail-in ballot. It's never, ever been easier. to. It's much too easy to vote right now because the, the system itself is open to such fraud. And the men, these men are just enriching themselves. They're enriching themselves. Donald Trump doesn't take a salary. He's lost a billion dollars in office helping the country. None of that is true. None of that is true. I hope it's just desperation from our friends on the left. I hope the election goes well for us tonight. We will find out. We're obviously going to have that election coverage. In any case, I would like to express a little bit of gratitude for how fun the past four years have been. I hope it continues for another four years. I hope we get another uh, a replay of election night 2016. So I will say goodbye to you for now until our election night later. And I will play you out on a glorious montage from 2016. 
Just last week, he confirmed to the National Review that he is again considering a run in 2016. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Look at me. Do it. I will personally write you a campaign check now on behalf of this country, which does not want you to be president, but which badly wants you to run. Which Republican candidate <clears throat> has the best chance of winning the general election? Of the declared ones right now, Donald Trump. <laughs> President Obama will go down as perhaps the worst president in the history of the United States, exclamation point, at real Donald Trump. <laughs> well, at real Donald Trump, at least I will go down as a president. So right now we have Hillary's about 75 or an 80% favorite. We have different versions yeah, of the forecast you can look at. Poll has Hillary Clinton up by double digits nationally, 12 points, 50 to 38, four-way race. Clinton leading in Florida, Clinton leading in North Carolina, Clinton leading in Ohio, Clinton leading in Nevada. I could go on and on and on. Uh, I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. And so, right now, Mr. Trump, to answer your call for political honesty, I just want to say, you're not going to be president, all right? It's been fun. It's been great. I love you. But, but come on, come on, buddy. We have a major projection right now. Donald Trump will take Ohio. That's it. I project Donald Trump will carry the state of Florida. Huge win for Donald Trump. Donald Trump, uh, we project, will win in Kentucky, in Indiana, with its 11 electoral votes. West Virginia, Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi, South Carolina, Alabama, North Dakota, uh, with its three electoral votes, and South Dakota, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, the state of Montana, North Carolina, Georgia, Iowa, Utah, Wisconsin, Arizona, Kansas, with its six electoral votes, Nebraska with its five electoral votes, and Wyoming with its three electoral votes. Sorry to keep you waiting, complicated business. The Michael Knowles Show is produced by Ben Davies. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Our technical director is Austin Stevens. Supervising producers, Mathis Glover and Robert Sterling. Assistant director, Pavel Wadowski. Editor and associate producer, Danny D'Amico. Audio mixer, Robin Fenderson. Hair and makeup, Nika Geneva. And production assistant, Ryan Love. The Michael Knowles Show is a Daily Wire production. Copyright Daily Wire 2020. Hey everybody, it's Andrew Claven, host of The Andrew Claven Show. You know, some people are depressed because the American Republic is collapsing, the end of days is approaching, and the moon has turned to blood. But on The Andrew Claven Show, that's where the fun just gets started. So come on over to The Andrew Claven Show and laugh your way through the apocalypse with me, Andrew Claven. <laughs>